When something is good, we smack our hands together. We wear different clothes in the daytime to the nighttime, and to wear those nighttime clothes to a supermarket is illegal. And we have supermarkets. And we call them supermarkets. <laughs> what I did just then was make strange what we usually consider normal. This is called defamiliarisation. Defamiliarisation is an artistic technique that presents us with something commonplace in a strange way in order to heighten our perception of the familiar. Pretty much anything can be defamiliarised with the right phrasing, and it can be used to evoke comedy, horror, or awe. Now, I could give you some examples of how 2020 has been a strange year, but of course I don't need to. You already know, the carpet has already been swept up from under all of us. Crowds in TV shows and films look wrong now. 9 to 5 office working seems kind of outdated, and flying to another country seems like a miracle. I'm reminded of Station Eleven, a post-apocalyptic book in which 99% of the world's population has been killed by a pandemic. Throughout the novel are snippets of an interview clip where the characters discuss life before the pandemic. I remember looking down from an airplane window. This must have been sometime during the last year or two, and seeing the city of New York. Did you ever see that? A sea of electric lights. It gives me chills to think of it. This image of a sea of electrical lights fills the reader with awe that they actually live in this world that's so amazing to the characters. This world with electricity and aeroplanes. By viewing our world through the lens of loss, we see it in a different light. It hits different. And while electricity hasn't been wiped out this year, thankfully, um, international travel has become something that might fill a lot of us with awe. But it's not that simple. At the same time, it's been a while now. We're getting used to things. The new normal. This brings me to an idea that sits adjacent to defamiliarisation, which is naturalisation. Naturalisation does the opposite of defamiliarisation and makes the strange commonplace. This technique is often used in science fiction, like when you watch Doctor Who and you're like, oh, it's the Daleks again, classic. They are familiar in a fun, exciting and nostalgic way that fans of Doctor Who enjoy. More generally, teleportation, parallel worlds and aliens are presented as normal in sci-fi and accepted as such by the audience. Often, instead of, wow, that alien is so strange, it's more, okay, I see how this alien is actually kind of like me. Outside of literature and film, we wouldn't usually use the word naturalisation, we would probably say normalisation, to make normal. You may or may not, depending on what circles you move in, have noticed that a lot of people have been comparing uh, the current pandemic to the bubonic plague in Shakespearean times. Of course, because we live in a capitalist society obsessed with productivity, a lot of the comparisons resemble... But that last one was pretty good, actually. Here, Shakespeare is being used to normalise the pandemic and I have a hunch as to why. On some level, a lot of people feel like this just shouldn't be happening. So is there some level of comfort to be found by remembering that this happened before? Of course, the bubonic plague was devastating, so in that sense it's very little comfort. But to remember it in relation to Shakespeare is to remember that life continued. Shakespeare wrote more plays. The pandemic was normal for Shakespeare in the same way that it supposedly are new normal. And this is reflected in his work where he references very often the plague as some kind of everyday exclamation. So for many people, particularly those who work in the art sector, this thought is comforting. The theatres reopened. The plague ended. At the very least, it gives a sense of temporality. But unsurprisingly, we are unoriginal. In Station Eleven, parallels also are drawn between the fictional Georgia flu and the bubonic plague. The chapter set in the post-apocalypse follow a nomadic Shakespearean theatre company who insists that survival is insufficient. So the book takes plays such as King Lear and places them in a post-apocalyptic world. Enter Lear, Kirsten said. Twenty years earlier, in a life she mostly couldn't remember, she had had a small non-speaking role in a short-lived Toronto production of King Lear. Now she walked in sandals whose soles had been cut from an automobile tyre three knives in her belt. She was carrying a paperback version of the play, the stage directions highlighted in yellow. Mad, she said, continuing, fantastically dressed with wild flowers. 
Interrupting King Lear stage directions with car tire, sandals and knives is jarring or at the very least unexpected. And the carefully placed King Lear quote mad shows the narrative is self-aware of this unexpected juxtaposition. Yet further into the novel, as the reader becomes accustomed to Shakespeare in the apocalypse, Shakespeare's legacy is used to naturalise or normalise the fictional flu. A later quote reads, Lines of a play written in 1594, the year London's theatres reopened after two seasons of plague. Some centuries later, on a distant continent, Kirsten moves across a stage in a cloud of painted fabric. Here, the post-apocalypse is naturalised through its relation to Shakespearean times. This correlation also creates a sense of events coming full circle, therefore embedding the fictional Georgia flu into our real history. This makes the scenario feel more believable, more plausible. And what this does more broadly is helps us to think about our own worlds when we're reading this post-apocalyptic novel, and that's usually the goal of dystopian and post-apocalyptic fiction, is to get the reader to interact with their own real world differently. Um, and this can be political, it can just be a renewed sense of wonder, which is what I think this book tries to achieve. But why does this matter? Why? What's the point? Why do we care? On a basic level, defamiliarisation can prevent us from taking things for granted. So reading Station Eleven might make you stop and think, wow, that electricity is amazing and I'm so lucky to have it. Um, what would life without it be like? And more deeply, the act of deconstructing what we consider normal can help us unearth a new perspective. It can encourage us to think about the things that we normalise that maybe shouldn't be normal, perhaps things that are strange or even damaging. Equally, thinking about things we would usually consider strange and actually thinking about why that is and wondering what it would be like if we normalise those things can be very powerful. An obvious example for now is wearing masks, something that in the UK at least was not um, something you saw on a regular basis. Now it's become something normal to see people wearing face coverings and masks and perhaps this will be something which is normalised in the future. In Station Eleven, just months before the apocalypse, one of the characters realises he's been sleepwalking through life. He reflects when was the last time he'd truly been moved by anything. Defamiliarisation and naturalisation could have the power to jolt awake and truly move somebody who's sleepwalking. And this is what both concepts have in common, the ability to move us, the ability to help us question our lives and our realities. And while it isn't everything, I think being woken up is a good start. Thank you for watching this video, I really appreciate it if you got to the end. If you would like to see more of this kind of video, um, please do subscribe, because else you will definitely not hear about it. It will be a mystery, I will vanish into the... the internet. Bye.